As a bookkeeper, a cleanup is going to be something you're going to encounter. I started my very own virtual bookkeeping business, and you can too. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about cleanup jobs, okay? There's going to be several things I'm going to cover here to give you all the ins and outs so that you know how to handle a cleanup job as a bookkeeper. First, we need to look at why do you even need a cleanup job? Well, it's probably because the books have been neglected for a period of time, or maybe a business owner was thinking they could do the bookkeeping and they've been in the books and they've messed it up. Um, there's a few things that can cause a need for bookkeeping. Um, usually the books have been neglected. So here you are as a bookkeeper. And a lot of times when we're starting out, we get a lot of cleanup jobs. So that's why I want to address this, especially for us who are just starting out. And these are the jobs we're getting. So I'm going to walk you through um, how to price them, what you need, all of the things, okay? So we'll need to determine a time frame that it will take us to finish the cleanup job. That's important too. I'm going to show you how. And I'm also going to um, recommend that if taxes have been filed on a particular year, then you don't need to do a cleanup on that. Um, those need to be left as is, but any information that there's not been a tax return filed on yet. That's probably why they want you to clean it up is so that they can file their tax returns with accurate financial information. A lot of times when we tackle cleanup jobs, it makes more sense to start fresh with this fresh set of books. So definitely run that by your client if that's an option for them. Sometimes they may want to keep the data from previous years for historical data. Maybe they have a board they have to report to, might be a bank reason, some loans they may have out there that they need their past financial history. There's ways you can do backups for that so that you keep it, but you can start a fresh QuickBooks file if you need to. And a lot of times when you're doing cleanup jobs, that's the best way to do it. So just know that that's an option. Have that conversation with your client, okay? Um, it saves us a lot of time when we're doing cleanup jobs. The second thing I want to discuss is we need to determine how much time it's going to take us to do a cleanup job. So one of the first things I want you to look at is when was the last time the bank accounts or credit cards were reconciled? When was it reconciled? That's going to give you a really good starting point for when you will have to start doing your job of cleaning up. Okay. So determine if it's 12 months ago, 24 months ago, 18 months ago, when was the last time their bank account was reconciled? And of course, full bank account statements and check those bank balances. Okay. So that's a really good starting point is to know, okay, do I have to do 18 months here? Am I having to do 16 months? When was the last time was it reconciled? A good rule of thumb, this is not set in stone, but just to give you an educational background on my experiences of cleanups, and a lot of my students are who, I, who are in my programs, I've asked this of them as well, how many hours it typically takes them to do cleanups, and they average anywhere from 10 to 30 hours. It just depends on the situation though, okay? So 10 to 30 hours for a cleanup job is, is a good variation to have in your mind when we're working through how do you even price this, okay? So think about how many years are you doing? Are you doing one year or are you doing two years? That helps you grasp how much is this gonna, how much time is this gonna take me? How many accounts are there? Bank accounts, credit cards, PayPal, what accounts do they have? How many transactions are in each of those accounts? Are there 20 transactions? Or are there 100 transactions per month? How many transactions are flowing through each of those accounts, okay? Now, I'm going to give you another general ballpark recommendation that on average, it will take you about an hour for each month when you're doing a cleanup job. I can usually work faster with cleanup jobs because you're batch working. Monthly bookkeeping does take a little bit longer because you're kind of in the middle of it with real time. So a good average is an hour per month that you have to do for cleanup. Now, a bigger client or someone who has a lot of issues, I would allot two hours a month to do that cleanup job, okay? So we're going to talk about numbers here. The third thing I want to cover with you for cleanup jobs is your pricing. How am I going to price it? Disclosure. I never tell my clients my hourly rate. 
Now I use an hourly rate to determine the price for some of my jobs, but I don't ever relay that information to my client, if that makes sense. So if I bill the client $1,400 for a cleanup job, I don't tell them it took me 14 hours to do that job. I don't let them know my hourly rate. That's not how it works with doing bookkeeping and for you to be able to be profitable, if that makes sense. Because we're not employees of these businesses. We are contractors. We own our own business and we are going to bill accordingly with that. Okay. So listen to my pricing of how I figure out, okay, what am I going to price this cleanup job? Take for the general average $70 to $100 per hour when you're thinking about that. Now, and I said earlier, a general rule of thumb is an hour for each month. So a 12 hour job, a 12 month job, if it took you an hour to do each of those at $100, that would be $1,200 for the year. That's just simple math. So I can show you this in this training. Okay. So $1,200. If it's a bigger client and it's going to take you two hours to work through it, then you need to charge $2,400. But this is a big tip. Listen to this. If you, because you're going to do an analysis on the account to determine, because they're going to want to know a price. Well, how much are you going to charge me and do this? So these are the things I'm telling you, what you need to look at, what you need to pull. And if you determine, okay, Vicki says it usually takes about an hour for a month. And I've got 16 months to do. Well, $1,600. But give the client a range and say 1600 to 2200 so that you have plenty of wiggle room that if you need to charge more, if you find there are issues when you get into their books that is going to take you more time than an hour or two hours on a month, then you can still charge them and you are going to make your money, okay? So when you quote them, quote them a range and always get 50% up front. So if you, I would do on the lower end, if you're going to do a $1,600 to $2,200 range, get at least $800 in funds from that client before you start any work. You definitely need to do that, okay? Um, I've heard too many horror stories of client of bookkeepers not getting paid. So make sure you get your 50% up front. Now, I want you to think through these numbers. So... When you get going quickly with your bookkeeping business and you've got monthly bookkeeping clients, that's your end goal for most of us. That's most of our end goals. Most bookkeepers, we do cleanups because out of necessity. We do cleanups when we're beginning to build our business. But eventually you're going to get to where you have 10 monthly recurring bookkeeping clients who are paying you $500 a month to do bookkeeping. So that's how much? That's a lot of money for the year. That's $6,000 a year for that one client if they're a $500 monthly bookkeeping client. Well, if they're coming to you for a cleanup and you're saying you're only going to charge them $1,400 for that one year of cleanup, and then you go, okay, well, monthly bookkeeping is going to be this dollar amount. Keep that in mind. I want you to think long term. You want to gain them as a monthly bookkeeping client. And most businesses, I've, I've never had this happen to me. Um, I've had a student that this happened to, and she had to work through it with the client. Most businesses are coming to us because they know there's a value in having the financial information at their fingertips. And so they're going to want to pay to have that done. They don't want to do it anymore if they're coming to you for a cleanup. But we need to make sure that we price our cleanup jobs close enough to what our monthlies are going to be so they don't go, whoa, wait a minute, I'll just bring it to you next October because I'm going to save me $1,000 because it's less to do the cleanup job. So what I like to do in my engagement letter, I will put a clause in there. You are receiving a discount for this cleanup job because I would love to offer you monthly bookkeeping services. Okay. So tie it to that so that you can package it well and make really good money. Okay. So think that through. Number four. The, the fourth thing that you need to know for cleanups, what documents do you need? You need bank statements. If you can get check images, that's really important. That's like a game changer to be able to see um, check images. You can get a guest login to their bank account so you can pull the information you need. For a lot of my clients, I'm able to do that. If you can get a tax return, it's helpful but not essential. 
it's helpful, but not essential. So don't stress if you can't get that. If you can um, get access to their tax professional to ask them questions if you need to, or talk to them and ask them if there's anything that you really need to know to give you a heads up. And then lastly, of course, their QuickBooks Online account. You need access to that as well. We are on step number five to clean ups, okay? The step five is we need to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the issues at hand. They're coming to us for a cleanup job and we need to figure out why, what's going on. So this is gonna entail running profit and losses statements, balance statement, balance um, sheet reports. Goodness, my words are getting tied. Profit and loss statement, balance sheet statement. We'll go into the bank transactions to see if transactions are sitting there to be coded inside of QuickBooks Online. And you're going to pull these reports. And we're going to look at a couple of things on these reports. On the profit and loss, you can begin to click into each of the expenses. If you know rent is $1,000 a month for your client and it's got $15,000 in the rent aisle, then you know something's wrong. Click into there and see what are they coding here? What did they code wrong? This is going to give you an idea of how much cleanup you're going to have to do to go back and recategorize things. Um, and then also on the profit and loss, uh, make sure there's not any personal expenses you're seeing like hair um, expense, except I will say models can write off their hair expense. I have a model that is one of my clients, but most people, their hair expense is not right off. You can't write that off. So that's a personal expense. See if there's personal expenses because that's going to give you an idea of how much time it's going to take you for that month to clean this job up. Balance sheet. Start looking at opening balances. Look at the equity account to see if they are putting draws in there, depending on how they're structured as a corporation or LLC. Are they taking owner draws? Is it being coded to the equity account for owner draws? These are all things that you can quickly look at as an analysis to determine, okay, is an hour going to be enough per month for this client? Also, I want to give you another tip. One thing I have done in the past, and it worked really well, was I price out my cleanup job. I give that client a, a range, and then I say, I'm going to work on your account for five hours, and I'm going to touch back base with you. I'm going to let you know if my range I gave you, and this is after you've gotten their 50% deposit and all of that, I will do a check-in with you to let you know how it's going. Because when you've worked on that set of books for five to seven hours, you will get a really good feel for if you're going to be able to do this in the time that you said you could, okay? When I start doing cleanup jobs, and I've been doing this for a while, it always takes me longer the first couple of months. It just does. Um, when you get into the groove of it, it's not going to take you as long on those last months when you're reconciling it and cleaning it up, okay? Now, number six item that I'm going to give you for cleanup jobs that you need to do. This is how you actually get started, how you do it, how you roll through doing a cleanup job. Keep this in mind. When you begin to do this, do not think about the full 12 months for that year. We have to get laser focused in on January, the first month, or if they're reconciled through March and you're doing April, you know, moving on from where they stopped. Focus in on that first month and get it reconciled. That's a huge deal when you're cleaning up. Get the first month reconciled. And then as you begin to progress, you will see doing three months at a time will be really easy because your vendors are going to be repeat vendors. Say they got the gas bill every month and their electricity bill every month. So you're going to be able to code really quickly as you move through. Okay, so tackle one thing at a time. One cool category that you can use in your QuickBooks Online as you're moving through reconciling for, say, 12 months is the Ask My Accountant by, um, expense account on the profit and loss. If you run across things that you're not sure what to do with them, put them into that category because at the end of it, you can run a report for that specific expense at Ask My Accountant. And you can send that report to your client and say, these are the 10 transactions that I'm not sure what to do with. Can you give me some clarity on what these transactions are? So the beauty of that is it keeps you going. So you don't have to stop and say, okay, I need to send an email about this transaction. If you throw them all into that one expense account, then you can go back and ask your specific questions for those 10 transactions or 20 or however many there are. Um, I would say hopefully you're not going to have more than 20 or 30 in there because if you do, there's an issue 
with figuring out a monthly expense probably that you need to be coding right. But it's a beautiful place to dump those so that you can at the end just shoot, shoot an email to your client and say, hey, you know, what do I do with this? Okay, check images, definitely get those. Start in January, get it reconciled. Don't look at the entire year. And lastly, I want to say to you, one of the free apps that I use and I encourage all of my students to use is Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. When you begin this job, your cleanup job, toggle your time because you need to keep up with how much time you're spending on this client. So you can tell at the end, you know, whatever rate you gave them, $2,200, if I spent 22 hours on this job, I made $100 an hour. That's profitable for a bookkeeper. And these are all ranges. You know, everybody charges differently. There's lots of opinions on what you should be charging as a bookkeeper. But the thing I always keep in mind, and I tell my students this, is that we're an owner of a business. So our hourly rate, we are having to pay our taxes on that, insurance to cover ourselves. So of course, we're going to be paid more than we would if we were an employee for the company, okay? So I enjoy doing monthly bookkeeping. My end goal, anytime I get a cleanup job, is to sell that client as a monthly bookkeeping client. I want them as a monthly bookkeeping client, and I encourage you to do the exact same thing. And I want you to take your skills that you have now and build a bookkeeping business. And I will show you how to do that in the videos like this. I have I have programs available that I will put the links to that I would love to see you inside so I can show you how to do this as well, building a bookkeeping business. I've done it. Hundreds of my students have done it and you can do it too. I believe in you and know that you can do it. Please comment below any other topics that you would like to see from me and videos. I would love to cover hands-on things, quick wins that you need as a bookkeeper as you're doing this journey of building your bookkeeping business. See you next time.